how to create mandalas in Affinity Designer using symbols. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP, low content books, printables and digital planners. So today I am showing you how to actually create some of these mandalas that I've created here using the symbols tool inside Affinity Designer. So what does the symbols tool do? Well, it actually allows us to create one image on one part of our canvas or artboard and recreate that image on another part of the canvas or artboard. And we can create as many images as we want at the same time. It's basically like the symmetry tool that you see in like Procreate and other um, art tools. So this is their version. So we're going to start creating. Now, the first image that you actually see here is actually using uh, symbols and using shapes with inside Affinity Designer. I've already created one where I just use shapes. You can go and check that out in the top right hand corner. And then the second one is I actually took images from um, Creative Fabrica and just uh, placed them inside my symbols to create a different sort of look. And you can be doing that with all sorts of different styles and techniques and putting different types of images in but all this can be done using symbols so I'm going to start a new document file new okay and I always start with like a square document because it's easier just to create it in square I'm putting eight inches by eight inches I have selected a, a DPI of 400 now if you're just using vectors like you're just using your own shapes that's in Infinity Designer, or you're just using SVG images or um, AI or EPS images, then DPI doesn't matter. But if you're putting PNG and JPEG images into your image and then you're using it in, say, your, your KDP books, then you need to have a high enough DPI. Now, this says millimeters, so I need to change that because I have put inches. I don't know why Affinity Designer does that. It's some sort of default. And it doesn't matter whether it's portrait or landscape because it is a square artboard. I said create an artboard, then I can add as many images as I want. Preferred embed, you can have preferred linked or preferred embed. That's just for your image placement. So embed, it's it's inside your document and linked is it's not actually there. It's in a folder that you need to keep linked to your document. And if you move your document, then you need to make sure that you move your images as well. I've chosen the color space CMYK because I'm using it for a print document. If I were just using it for screens like digital planners or digital activity books, then I would change that color format to RGB. I'm going to include margins so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm not doing anything with bleed because this would not be a final image. It would just be an image that I would use as part of something else. OK, so I'm just going to click create. OK, so we have our new um, artboard that we're going to actually start working from. So the first thing you need to do is create like a grid or a guide to help you. And the best way to do that is to actually use the star shape. So I'm going to click on the triangle tool and click on the little drop down and then I'm going to select the star shape and I'm going to draw that out. And I'm actually going to go down here to the transform window and I want to actually make it an same sort of shape, like a square shape. So it's just easier to work with when I'm doing different things. I'm also going to change the, well, I don't need to change the fill. It doesn't matter. Um, but I do want to make sure I've actually got a stroke so you can actually see what I'm doing. But I can remove the fill if I need to like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the points up. Now I'm going to create a 12-sided um, mandala. I do find it easier to do even numbers. So um, I'm going to select 12 make sure it is 12 there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bring the inner radius down so it just is giving me a guide I'm also going to move this up so it actually snaps in 
to the middle so I know exactly where I'm working from. So that's the first part of our tool. So I've got it that quite thick. I might bring that down to one just so you can actually see it. And then I'm going to go into the tool shapes again and I'm going to try triangle now. I'm going to draw that out. This time I'm going to actually fill this just with white so you can actually see what's happening. And I'm going to also make that like a square image. So 0.7, 0.7. And then I'm also going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to bring this down so that it snaps to that sort of guide. And then I can either use Command J to duplicate that or I can uh, hold my Alt or Option key down and then just drag and it makes a copy for me. Uh, do that. And then what I want to do is I need to rotate that or flip it so that it is the other side of that there. I'm just going to zoom in so I can check that it's all in. That's fine. Zoom back out use my hand tool to move things about. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of those together and then I'm going to use the shortcut key of command G to actually group them. Now this is where you need to now create your symbol. So we're making a symbol of the triangles so that anything that's created inside of this triangle group will um, make a symmetry, will Put different things across our 12 sections on our star. So then the next section, what we need to do is go to view studio and then look for symbols. Now you might have symbols already checked and it might be somewhere in one of these panels or you might have docked it into a panel. So that's our symbol there. All I do is simply create Click create, making sure that I am on the symbol there. Then again, go back to the, so to the move tool. And then what I want is this enable transform origin. Clicked. And now the circle that is there, I want to actually bring that down and put it in the middle. Now, the whole reason why I'm doing that is so that I can create duplicates of this group, this symbol, and put it on each point of the star. And if I do that, it'll the minute I do a duplicate and tell it how much to move by, it will actually rotate via that um, circle. So what I can do is I can do it manually. So I can do command J and then I can maneuver this round or I can actually uh, calculate how many degrees. So what you do is you get your calculator up. So I'm going to calculator. And then what you can do is you go 360 because it's a circle and then divided by how many sections you've got. So I've got 12 and that should give me 30 degrees. So now when I go down to here where it says rotate and I type 30 degrees, it should move and rotate. Now, when I do command J, it sort of remembers to keep rotating for every 30 degrees from each point. So it quickly does the rotation for me. Then what I need to do is I need to highlight all of these and then group them and I'm making sure that I've left the first one, the one where I actually created the first symbol um, on its own because that's where we're going to put different things. And then I'm going to just group that. So that is our first stage done. We've actually created what the symmetry tool, the symbol that's now going to let us draw in any part. So what you can do is you can use your pen tool, your pencil tools, your 
vector brushes, you can use shapes, you can place images or anything inside of the symbol. So I'm just going to make sure I'm actually clicked in here and I'm going to click on the bottom triangle in my layer. And I'm just going to use the pen tool to actually show you that anything you create and put inside that symbol now is appearing everywhere else. And again, you can use the pencil tool. And because I'm on my using the mouse, it's not very good. I have got the sculpture one on. Um, I can put the stabilizer on. And that should help me. Should. I think it's too far. The length is too far. Yeah, that's better control. So I can do that. I can also go to my brush tool. And you can see I'm actually going anywhere inside. I can start anywhere. And I can also change the types of brushes that I'm using as well. So I cre can create as unique as I want. So I'm going to delete those that I've just created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if you're using shapes. Now, most mandalas start with a circle in the middle. And if I draw that out like a uh, ellipse or a circle, you'll see it creates that fancy pattern, which is absolutely great. It's fantastic, but it's not exactly what we want. What you need to do is you need to actually move your image or your shape out of the symbol for it to just be one. So you can either move it above or you can move it, it below. So I often find it easier to move it below, maybe above the star. And if I use my option tool while I'm moving it, you can see it changes more to a circle. And then I can put that in the middle. And again, I actually want to keep the same sort of uh, shape for both of those. So it's, it is actually more square. And then I'm going to, well, I'm not in the symbol, use a star tool again, draw that out. In the middle. And again, I'm going to one and a half, and then I'm also going to change it to 12 points. And then I'm going to change my outer radius so it fills in. And I'm going to do my inner radius as well. And you can do your outer as well. And you can also do like an inner circle like that. So it makes it a different image. I'm going to make sure that that is in the middle. So you can see that I'm starting to create different things. But if I go back into the triangle, into the symbol, I'm going to go and get a tear tool where I can find it. And I'm actually going to try and put it on the line here so that everything's more shaped, more gives me something else to do. I'm going to start drawing out my circle. I'm going to hold the shift key down so that it gives me more of a rounded shape rather than an ellipse shape. down a bit. So you can see that I'm starting to get shapes. Now I want to show you that you can place images. Now you can't just drag and drop an image from a file because it sort of makes a mess. It's, I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to just grab a SVG file and drag one out and I just let go of that you can see it starts going a bit crazy and does weird things now it's because it's gone really big so i'm just going to delete that and show you how it's easier if you actually place the image so you can either use this place image tool or you can go to file and place image now because i'm filming at the same time it takes a long time to load up
to open that one and then you just simply drag out where you want it so I could place that there and then I could do the same again and again it might take a while but because I've already got one open you can see bring that out there and you'll see that the triangle is covering things and the star is covering things but you don't need to worry about that we're going to switch that off so I usually like to have a circle around everything so that um, it's white and I can then mask and merge my mandala so I'm just going to start drawing and hold the shift button down and get a circle and I'm just going to move it into place and I'm actually going to do that a seven and that a seven and then I'm just going to snap that into place so I've actually now got my circle and what I want to do is I can take the triangles off by just ticking the ones inside my original symbol tick that one and then I can also tick the star off and then you can see that I have now got my mandala but the thing is the symbols and everything still change still change even when the triangles and the star isn't visible it is still there for you to go and change and do different things if you don't click on everything at the same time so like I can maneuver that around um, I can duplicate that and then I can flip and I can maneuver like I say every time you can just change where you want making sure that you're on the right layer and obviously you can lock layers as well so if I wanted to lock that ellipse I can just click on the ellipse and click on the lock sign and now every time I try and move stuff that one shouldn't maneuver with everything else and then that is how you can create a mandala using shapes and bringing in different images that you may have got from like Creative Fabrica or any other stock sites where you purchase your images from. So it just makes it a bit more unique and a bit more different. And yes, you can be building a load of these and then putting them inside of say animals or other shapes, or you can be doing Bible quote books. There is just endless possibilities once you get used to using symbols and shapes. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And while you're here, why not check out my other affinity designer videos?